Briefly, he removed his mask so we could see his face. <laughs> then it was time to pay. He brought us a bottle of the drug. When we asked how much should be given to patient, we were told all that mattered was money. How many bottles now? So, oh, when they are gone, once it's all about your funds. So, which one? Three days after this meeting, the FDA tested samples of core effects and found them to contain the bacteria E. coli, which often derives from feces. The agency recalled all core supplements from the market in response. Our attention then turned back to the Abdallah brothers. In the days after our first meeting, they called us, encouraging us to purchase more coronavirus cures. <laughs> They made increasingly sensational claims, telling us they were treating the vice president of Senegal's family, who they say were infected with COVID-19. Uh, president, uh, uh, Senegal president, uh, vice president. It's impossible the Abdallahs actually contacted the vice president of Senegal. The role of the vice president does not currently exist in that country. We planned to meet the two brothers again to discuss a larger deal. They thought they had me on the hook. But little did they know I was not just another victim. I wanted to see how far their fraud will go. I wanted to see deeper into the mind of a scammer. They were staying in a remote house the edge of Accra, what I found inside shocked me. More than 100 bottles of fake cure. Over the next few minutes, Dr. Abdallah Senior began to boast of knowing some of the most powerful people in Ghana. He claimed he was doing a deal with the king of Ashanti, the Asantehene. We spoke to the Asantehene and they told us these claims are completely false. It was all a small screen to try and impress us. The younger Abdallah told us he had given the drug to others and that they were sharing positive testimonies on social media. According to counterfeit medicine expert Bright Simmons, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a time of great opportunity for such social media quacks. Today, a huge number of people get information about everything, including medical and health information on social media networks. We don't have a blueprint, we don't have a rule book of how you deal with misinformation at a large scale during a pandemic in an age of social media and an age where trust in established institutions and leaders is at an all-time low. That confluence of forces is completely unprecedented. It becomes very easy for a scammer, for a snake oil salesperson to quickly move into the, to the breach. Dr. Abdallah Jr. made it clear to us that their drug production strategy is designed to maximize profit during the pandemic. <laughs> Then things grew more sinister. Dr. Abdallah Senior did his best to persuade me he is a man of mysterious spiritual power. Mm -hmm. 
He claimed he is invincible. In his increasingly elaborate attempt to showcase his power, he even claimed he was responsible for the downfall of President Yaya Jame in Gambia. Then the talk turned to money. They demanded 150,000 Ghana cities, over 25,000 US dollars, for 100 bottles of their concoction. 150,000. 150,000 Ghana. Okay. Before leaving, he told me the number of coronavirus patients he was treating had expanded. They thought they had hit a jackpot, but we would never come back and pay for the drugs. We gathered all the so-called cures we had collected and took them to the Ghana Standard Authority. This is where prospective medicine are tested before going to the market. It's one of the best laboratories in Ghana. And what brings you here this time? These are various concoctions that we have collected and we are here to test it. Testing the efficacy of drugs requires clinical trials. So instead, we submitted them for toxicology tests to check if the product contained any dangerous biological or chemical ingredients. After days of analysis, we returned to collect the results. All the concoctions failed to meet the standard for human consumption. Dr. Abdallah's bottles were contaminated with unacceptable levels of bacteria and mold. Further tests will be needed to determine what threats these contaminants could pose to patients. But depending on the dosage and how long the products are kept, they have the potential to cause serious illness, including diarrhea and other gastrointestinal symptoms. There's the potential for the bacteria to multiply and then become much more dangerous to consume after a few weeks. The sealed core FX samples contained levels of mold that were too high to be counted. Humans should be able to tolerate low levels of these. But the fact that the test picked them up means that um, these were above the acceptable levels. Both the core FX and Dr. Abdallah samples were also flagged for containing phosphine, which depending on the quantity could pose dangers. We put our findings to the director of the FDA. So far as we are concerned, there's no product that has been registered according to the laws of Ghana for cure for coronavirus. Because of the potential dangers it posed, we showed her a bottle of Dr. Abdallah's concoction. Some Just by looking at the product, I can tell you it's not registered. FDA would never allow you to put this in your product. COVID cure one. Shouldn't this... Yes. Ring a bell to Ghana. The FDA doesn't really care about it. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. The regulator's mandate is to protect public health and safety. If there's anybody out there and you are falsely putting a product on the market that it goes against the laws of the country, we have regulatory actions and we will come after you. Really, it is a very serious crime. And I'm not joking with this. She told us the agency would take swift action against anyone selling unregistered medicines. I'm actually sorry that we have not seen it. But as I say, we are not everywhere. And we, as part of our work, we rely on information. And you have just given me information. And whenever we're given information, we follow through. Less than 24 hours after our interview, the FDA moved to shut down the production facilities of the Abdallah brothers. They had been on their radar for some time now. The agents found evidence of large-scale production, including almost 300 bottles of so-called COVID cures. Dr. Abdallah Jr. repeatedly tried to persuade the agent 
he was not selling these concoctions. No. Well, we have not sold this thing in any way or the other. We have not sold them out to anybody. Well, what you have here is in commercial quantities. We made that in this quantity in the sense that we are waiting for when the approval comes. Well, we did not intend selling. When asked to explain why a fake FDA number was on the labels, he had no answer. We sent our allegations to the Abdallah brothers and they responded, claiming their product was for testing purposes only and that they are taking steps to license it. They claimed they never said their product can cure coronavirus, despite it being labeled COVID cure. They also claimed they had never sold their concoction to anybody. Kua FX and Samuel Atu Duncan did not respond to our allegations. We, this is where we are, that is why we invited you. After they had gathered all their evidence, the FDA brought the two Abdallah brothers in for question. The individuals exposed in this film do not represent the herbal medicine industry as a whole, which provides crucial services to many Ghanaians. Professor Gordon Awandari hopes herbalists and scientists can unite in rooting out the rotten eggs. There are a few quacks there who they really do a disservice to the industry and to their colleagues, which is unfortunate because there may be some that actually are good. If we don't get rid of the fake ones, then you have a situation where people mistrust the whole enterprise. At a time of global pandemic, we have a duty as journalists, as citizens, to fight fake medicines and expose the quacks that mislead us. I will always be watching. Initially demanded 5,000 cities. He claimed our interview. The FDA. This is where we are. That is why we invited you. After they had gathered all their evidence, the FDA brought the two Abdallah brothers in for question. The individuals exposed in this film do not represent the herbal medicine industry as a whole, which provides crucial services to many Ghanaians. Professor Gordon Awandari hopes herbalists and scientists can unite in rooting out the rotten eggs. We have a few quacks there who they really do a disservice to the industry and to their colleagues, which is unfortunate because there may be some that actually are good. If we don't get rid of the fake ones, then you have a situation where people mistrust the whole enterprise. At a time of global pandemic, we have a duty as journalists, as citizens, to fight fake medicines and expose the quacks that mislead us. I will always be watching.